down there with Brad, and uh, I don't see any kids, unless you want to be today. Uh-uh, you're preaching. I'm going down. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Swap. Same God, same Holy Spirit, doesn't matter. Just give you the same message. <laughs> so. All right, well, you guys ready for the word today? All right, you sat down. Let's stand back up if you can. Say this with me. Say, this is the word of God. Oh, I know we're not, not as many people here, so let's say it anyway. Say, this is the word of God. I'll do what it says to do. I'll say what it says to say. This is the pure, living power of God. My heart is open and receptive to your word this morning, Lord. Amen. All right, well, I've been teaching a series of messages, just started, on the Holy Spirit and you. Um, we did uh, the first part um, uh, last week. And I want to dig into um, the second part of that uh, today. Let me see here. Oh, that's why. Um, I'm going to go over some of the stuff from last time. I'm not going to actually, um, all of them, I'm not going to actually uh, repeat the scriptures. You can write them down and check back with them later because I do want to go a little bit farther today. Um, <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit, you, I think um, I'm already sensing it. It's really great when you preach a message and all of a sudden you start sensing the Lord doing with what you're talking about. And we're talking about getting to know the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to let someone in your life that maybe you don't maybe know. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody randomly came to me at the fair yesterday and started talking with me, I might be a little whatever. You know, I was playing cornhole with my... Uh, uh, Aaron one day and up comes this person on my driveway and they, he starts shooting the breeze like with us like he's known us forever I don't know him I didn't open up with him much at all because I don't know him right but if I get to know some people and their personalities and stuff I'll kind of let them in because I kind of trust them I get to know them so as you get to know who the Holy Spirit is a person of the Trinity now when I say person I don't mean as a human being obviously uh, the Holy Spirit is fully God right but what I'm saying is, is that a person of the Trinity means that he has a personality. See, the Holy Spirit has two things. He has purpose, somebody say purpose, and personality. All right, say purpose and personality. All right, so um, Jesus knew the Holy Spirit. He had a, whole, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew the purpose and the personality of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, back in uh, uh, the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, it says that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the earth, but the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So in the very beginning, the Holy Spirit was there. And then in John chapter 1, 1 through 3, it says that uh, Jesus was the Word, He is the Word, and He was in the beginning. So we've got Jesus in the beginning, we've got the Holy Spirit in the beginning, and we have God in the very beginning. Three in one. Hallelujah, right? So Jesus knew the Holy Spirit. We think, well, he knew the Holy Spirit, you know, when he was conceived, because the Bible says that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Actually, Jesus knew the Holy Spirit way before he was conceived, because Jesus was in existence in the beginning of the earth, right? All right, so, um, and you know, when Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit, he didn't, know, he didn't ever say it or that or some fleeting emotion or mysterious thing. Jesus uh, called the Holy Spirit a uh, him. You look at John 14, 6, Jesus said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Amen? He, so he, the Holy Spirit, has a purpose he, the Holy Spirit, has a personality. He's just as much a part of the Trinity as Jesus is. He's just as much as part of the Trinity as God is. But very few Christians, I think, have revelation of who the Holy Spirit really is. I know even as I've been digging into these scriptures, um, God has been showing me some really cool things that I didn't know about the Holy Spirit, right? So Jesus knew the Holy Spirit in the very beginning. Yes, he, he was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Copy this down, Luke 1, 35. Jesus was baptized by the Holy Spirit at the River Jordan. That's in Acts 10, 38. Jesus comes to John, says he needs to be baptized. John says, I should be baptizing you. Jesus says, we need to do what the custom is, what's honorable. We need to do that. John the Baptist takes Jesus. Can you imagine what that must have been like? John the Baptist. Being John the Baptist, 
baptizing the Son of God. Wow. Baptize him. He comes up. The Spirit of God comes down in the form of a dove. And God says, this is my beloved Son, right? Isn't that good? So Jesus was baptized uh, by the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit in Acts 10, 38. It says there that God anointed Jesus, right? Um, and that, <clears throat> excuse me, and he anointed him with power, right? So Jesus had power of the Holy Spirit moving in and through him. Jesus was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. It says that in Romans 8, 11. The scripture before that, I'm not sure if I said it, about Jesus being empowered, that's Acts 10, 38. Um, and then after Jesus dies and rises again, what does he do? He sends the Holy Spirit. That's in John 16, 5 through 8. So the Holy Spirit, him, the Trinity, has personality and purpose. Let's just take a, an overview really quickly of some of the personality of the Holy Spirit. Well, um, we're made in the image of God, right? And so um, there are some things that we have in his likeness. Obviously, we're not God. Don't even go there. But we're like him. He created us in his image, right? And so the Holy Spirit has, you know, all of the, the uh, personality type things that we have in our lives without the, nature, uh, the sinful nature. And you can see that all over the place. You look at Galatians 5.22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. Well, what does that mean? It means the fruit of being with the Spirit, because He is this, you will be it, right? So the fruit of being with the Spirit is love. He is love, and so when you have Him on the inside, you have love. It's a fruit of being with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of being a Christian. Joy, the Holy Spirit has joy. The Holy Spirit has peace. The Holy Spirit has long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. This means the whole, this is the personality of the Holy Spirit. Did you know the Holy Spirit experiences sorrow? It says in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That word means a deep sorrow. Did you know that the Holy Spirit has a will? 1 Corinthians 12.11. He has a mind. Romans 8.27. He has knowledge. 1 Corinthians 2.11. 10 through 11. He is a helper and a teacher. John 14, 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance of the things I said to you. He's a helper. Have any of you guys just needed a little bit of help, right? And a helper can also be translated comforter. Could have you guys use a little bit of comfort, right? The Holy Spirit is there for us. John 16, 13 says that he is a guide. It says he'll guide you into all truth. You know, when we went to Africa, we had people that were on the ground. Sure, when you went to India or some of the other places, Peru, for some of you guys here, you had a guide, right? Somebody that was on the ground out there that knew the culture, knew what was safe, knew what wasn't safe, and guided you through it. You know, I remember we were sitting on a large boat in, in Lake, I think called Bolta, whatever, and... Um, somebody, one of the persons sitting next to me saw a large tr black tarantula sitting underneath the, um, somewhere on the boat. And um, the, uh, the guide was with us, the translator was with us, and we were going to say something, and he said, don't say anything. Don't say anything about the tarantula, because he said they would be dumb enough to try to shoot the tarantula. Okay, so don't do that. I wouldn't know that. I mean, I think it's probably common sense you don't try to shoot things when people are on a boat. But obviously, he didn't trust the guy that was on the front of the boat, and so we didn't say anything about it. He's a guide, right? He protects us, right? There were times, one, one time we were supposed to go into a tibaboo, and the guide said, Today is not the day to go into a Tibaboo. I guess there was some stuff going on there that was not safe. He said, today would be a great day to go out into the bush. And the bush aren't paved. They don't necessarily even have a, um, a, a dirt road. It, we were in a tractor with a wagon, and they just pushed out, and we had to trust the guide that he was taking us somewhere. And lo and behold, after maybe an hour or two, or even longer, I'm not sure, uh, John and you guys that went with us, remember, all of a sudden it opened up, and there was in the bush this um, whole tribe there full of life and vitality. We had to trust the guide. You know, we have the Holy Spirit to help guide us. Amen? And we have him. You know, the early church... Um, had to really trust the Holy Spirit. It wasn't like the early church could get up and say, okay, here's a Bible. 
All right, and today I would like you to turn into, you know, Matthew chapter, whatever. They didn't have the New Testament. Many of the books were being, some of the books were actually being written while they were um, in their churches, you know. They read from the Old Testament. They read encouraging letters from the Apostle Paul, Peter, and others. And then they would um, trust and be led by the Holy Spirit with everything else. You know, and this one scripture jumped out at me in uh, Acts 15, 28. They said this, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay uh, upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. It says it seemed good. You know, I, I was surprised that my kids asked me to go on some of the rides yesterday because I think a lot of them knew the answer. There was no way the rides that Tori and Amy were going on, the Ring of Fire, scary ride, I would even think of going. Just looking at it makes me dizzy and sick to my stomach. You know, but you, you just kind of guess. They're going to guess that hey, Jeff isn't going to want to do the Ring of Fire because Jeff doesn't do rides like that. I got on the swings yesterday, and was very proud. I, I was scared, but I did the swings. You know, so it just it was the only ride I did. No, no, I did the roller coaster. Amy's balking up here. Balk, balk, balk. Yeah, okay, so yeah. If you knew the things that were going on up here, you would be laughing more. <laughs> you know, so generally, you know, they know my personality enough to really know Jeff probably isn't going to want that. You know, that's not what he's about. The early church was the same way. They knew his personality and purpose well enough that sometimes they felt comfortable making certain decisions because they kind of sensed that's what he wanted. They didn't necessarily get a direct word. They just kind of got that sense. The early church had that. And then Jesus, before we dive into what's new today, Jesus wanted to, tell, to let people know that they needed to have a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus. And what's really interesting is, is there's a scripture that we talked about in Matthew 6.6 6, where Jesus says, when you pray, go into a closet and pray. And on the surface, what that is saying is, you know, we don't want to be out there praying to get attention from other people. And we get that. But if you look at that word closet, it actually um, was a place that you would take things that were dear to you and, and have them in a safe place there. It, you know, you ever felt like you needed somebody to go talk to and they were safe to talk to and that you would trust that they wouldn't tell other people and so that you could be comfortable talking to them. They were a safe place, okay? That's what Jesus was saying. He was saying that God, a closet, a Holy Spirit, a safe place to bring your cares and concerns. But he actually took it a little farther because sometimes these Greek words evolved over time because some of them are, are uh, pictures that you can see, right? And so it actually had developed over time into um, meaning um, uh, a, uh, a bedroom of a wife and a husband. It was a, a place where they would go and they would um, speak, talk, connect in a deep way that nobody else could ever connect with. And that's what the Holy Spirit was. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. He was saying you could go to a place and have this deep conversation and, and you could have this deep relationship. It's very unique, you know? And so Jesus wanted everybody to have that kind of person, uh, that experience. Now, last week I had a, a simple challenge for you. I'm not sure how many of you guys did it, but this was your simple challenge. Um, was to go back and take a look at your notes and look at these scriptures, look them up, and start to get to know the personality and purpose of the Holy Spirit. And then I said, take some time um, during the day, anywhere you want during the day, and start communing and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit if you haven't already God. You can have a conversation that starts out with, I've really never done this before because some of us haven't. Help me and walk me through this. Two, maybe you've had a relationship with God and, and, and it's been deep for a long time and you want to go deeper, okay? So speaking of going deeper, let's go a little bit deeper today. You guys ready? Somebody say yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So the name of this uh, one is, uh, it's the Holy Spirit in you and then it's strength for today, all right? So have you ever been to that place where you're exhausted? Like, I have nothing left to give, right? Um, it's, it's like, you know, I've done all I can in this job. Nothing's working. 
I'm exhausted. I can't continue to do it. Some of you teenagers in the room, you ever been at school and you're overwhelmed with so many things going on, maybe socially or maybe going on with, with, um, with your schoolwork or the sports that you're involved with or the other curricular activities you're involved with, and you're like, I just don't have the strength. Like today, you ever wake up in the morning and guys are like, I just don't feel like going to school today? I bet you have. You're exhausted. We've all had that place. And I hope that there's nobody here that would say, no, I've never been there, Jeff. I would say two things to you. Number one, hang in there. You'll get there. And number two, you're lying to me. That's besides the point. You know, but we all get to that point where like, I'm just, I'm completely exhausted. You know, um, I'm just, just done. It was like, I made some um, peanut butter. Ooh, I want some peanut butter cookies today. Um, peanut butter cookies. I'm really great at peanut butter cookies because it's just, it's just four ingredients, eggs, vanilla, sugar, and peanut butter. That's it. So I'm good with that. So I made some peanut butter cookies. And I, oh, I put them in. It's been a while since I've cooked some. I put them in. And there's a tray at the top and a tray at the bottom. And I open it up. And the tray at the top, they weren't done yet. I said, these aren't done yet. You know, so I just put them back in. I waited about three or four minutes. I opened up the door and smoke came out. And I'm like, they're done. Have you ever been to that point where like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, right? Well, Paul had experienced times in his ministry where he felt, I'm um, feeling kind of done. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be the Apostle Paul? Shipwrecked, um, whipped, stoned to death, risen from the dead, being chased by folks that weren't happy about the gospel of Jesus Christ. There were times when Paul felt done. He even talked about it in Philippians. You know, He said, I know what it's like. I know how to be content in being under. Being done is feeling kind of under. He says, I know what it's like to, to be above. He says, in all of that, ready for this? I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Absolutely. Another scripture that Paul says, um, my God shall supply everything I need in accordance to his riches and glory. Philippians 1.9. And this is when he's in jail, okay? And I'm not going to depth that because we just got done studying that. He's in jail, right? He's got spiritual kids out there pastoring churches. Some of them are doing well. Some of them are struggling. He's stuck in jail. He can't go visit them. He can't encourage them. And this is what he says. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through prayer and the supply. Somebody say supply. Okay, supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. This word supply is really interesting. I got into this. I couldn't believe it as I started digging. Look at this. Paul uses this word supply to describe the empowering that happens from the Holy Spirit. Okay, the first part of the word is this word called epi, which means on behalf of. And the second part of the word is corrigio, which is the Greek word for a choir or a choral presentation. It's where we get the word choreography from. Is there anybody else in the room that's as curious as I am about that? So this word, supply, means in behalf of the choir. Do you see the connection? Because I don't. I don't. So I dug into it this morning. Check this out. Thousands of years ago in classical Greece, there was a huge choral and dra drama company who practiced endlessly for a huge, important theater performance. After they had put in a great amount of time, effort, and energy and practice, it was finally time for the show to go on the road. But there was one major problem. They ran out of money. These people had given their lives to this production. They had committed all their resources to making sure this performance succeeded. But because they ran out of money, it meant the show was over, finished. They were washed up before the show ever officially even got started. From all appearances, it was the end of the road for them and their dream. Have you ever been there? Mm. Well, this, what happened was, is because they didn't have any of these funds, um, they, did, they put all this energy and practice into this, and from all natural appearances, it looks like the end of this dream that we talked about. Um, what's really interesting is this wealthy man uh, showed up, um, and, and it was actually the beginning of a new adventure because he came in and he decided that he was going to underwrite um, all that they needed. 
right? In a moment of despair, a wealthy man stepped into the situation. He had heard about their commitment. He had heard about how hard they had worked on the project for so long. And because this wealthy man was so impressed with their dedication, he stepped into the middle of their situation and made a huge financial contribute. Are you ready for this? On behalf of the choir. That's what Paul was talking about. Supply. When he said that, they knew what he was saying. They knew about the story he was talking about. That there was a supply that the Holy Spirit would give. And that's where Paul gets this word from. So you can actually translate it a little bit like this. I am certain that this situation will ultimately turn around and result in my deliverance. I'm sure of it. First, because you are praying for me. And second, because of the special contribution on behalf of the choir, of the spirit that Jesus Christ is donating for my present cause. This means that when you've given your best effort, you don't have to feel like you don't have any more energy. You can trust in that divine promise. Isn't that good? I mean, think about it if it was like this. What if, like, somebody came through the door, and I know I'm talking about money, and this is not just about, this is so much more than money, but I just, I think it's easier to kind of explain it like this. What if somebody came back through the door, and they said, okay, Jeff, um, we've heard a little bit about your church and what you're doing with God, and we've decided that we're going to underwrite and give you all the money you need for anything you want to do. Whoa! I would be praying quickly about a homeless shelter. I would be praying quickly about a gym. I would be praying quickly about, you know, a bigger facility and about doing more for our community. What would that be like? Wouldn't that be cool? Dennis, anything that you need for the youth group? Underwritten. Anything that you need for deep sea, underwritten. Oh, got to get back to my leash. Sorry. You know, anything that Pastor Linda needs for her women's ministry, anything that you need to go out there and do the things that you've called you to do, take it care of. And what's interesting about this word was, not only did that man underwrite what they did, he underwrited what they did and more. They, they were to the point where they didn't know what to do with all the money because it supplied everything that they needed. Guess what? We have the Holy Spirit who was already doing that for us. And doesn't that change your perspective a little bit? You know, it's so easy when things get hard. We've all done it. I've done it. We've all done it. We're just like, oh my gosh, I just can't go another step farther. Life is just so hard. I'm just, I'm done, you know? And, you know? And it changes how we live and the attitude we have because even though we're feeling that way, we know that we have a God that supplies everything that we need. All the, you know, as I get older, I'm like, I just wish I had a little more energy today. Because I could have done a little bit more. Lord, thank you for the energy that I need to do the things I called to do. Or, Lord, I'm struggling to be the father that I feel like I need to be. Help me. Supply me with the wisdom and the discernment to help me be the dad that you've called me to be. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. And you only get that from, from connecting um, and communing and fellowshipping with God, the Holy Spirit. You can sense it when you're with him. Amen? It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. I don't have to walk around like I'm done. I can put my shoulders back and say, this is, looks a little scary. But God will supply all that I need for life and godliness. God will supply me. I'm going to ask him for faith. The Lord will supply me with faith to go forward and do the things that he's called me to do. And, you know, I think that um, we have to be careful that we take the time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the reasons. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not like, it's just, I don't want it to be like this, but I'll just share an example. So your name is Joe. Okay. All right. Everybody say hi to Joe. It's his second Sunday with us. He's a Greek guy. So what, we're just kind of getting to know each other. But what if it's like the first Sunday, because I... We met at the door. And you came in the door on the first Sunday. I'm like, hey. And you're like, hi, I'm Joe. I'm like, hi, I'm Jeff. How are you, Joe? Hey, um, I need a ride to the supermarket. Can you give me one? Oh, and actually, now I think about it, not only do I need the ride, I need the money for the groceries. And I'd like to go on a date with my wife, so could you watch my kids? You're going to be like, <laughs> you're probably going to be like, what have I just walked into? 
what kind of relationship is this? This is heap everything on Joe so he can do stuff for me. And then when he doesn't do stuff, when I don't do stuff for him, he's not around. Is that the kind of relationship that we're going to have, right? I'm not talking about that kind of relationship with God. Because, you know, we need to just spend time with God and love him because he's God and we love him, right? We can still go to him with things. But sometimes that's what people's relationships with God really is. We just go to him when we need stuff. So, yeah, I need a, I don't know, a new house. Could you give me one? Yeah, it's like, what's up with that? You know, we have, you know, I've, me and Mike, we meet regularly, right? We just talk about life. You talk about what's going on in your life. We talk about what's going on in my life. And then we pray together, right? That's a really good relationship to have. Because it's not all about what I want or what I need or what you want or what you need. It's about, you know, the fact that even though you're a Cowboys fan, we can get along. You know? And I, actually, I enjoy being with you. We went to a um, men's retreat together. And we got to hang out there. We went for a walk there. And we got to play some sports there and get to know one another. You know, the reason I have this relationship with Mike isn't because of all the things he does for me. It's because I like Mike. I love him. He's a great guy. Guess what? It's the same with our relationship with God. He loves us. We love him. Our relationship with him should be so much deeper at the same time. But at the same time, God wants us to ask for help. At the same time, God wants us to know that he's going to supply our need for, any, for the things that he's put in our life, whether that be energy, whether that be things in life. You know, the other day I made a mistake and I forgot about what day it was and I forgot to, I didn't eat breakfast or lunch and eat anything and I just went to my normal workout time. I went in the pool and swam my whatever in the pool and did some running. I got home. My face started to feel kind of numb. I didn't feel real good. Well, it's because I didn't eat. I didn't t- take the time to eat. We're out running around like our heads are cut off, but we don't take the time to be with God who loves us, who forgave us for all of our sin. He loves us unconditionally. We forgot to take the time. You know what? When we're with him, spending time with him, sorry, Sean, he just empowers us. Amen? He empowers us. See, people that are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, have God's power moving in and through them. So I want to encourage you with that today. And next week, what I want to talk to you about is, I went through some personality things of the Holy Spirit, but it's a brief overview. You should see the amount of scriptures, in the Gospels in particular, of Jesus interacting with the Holy Spirit. You know, he knew the Holy Spirit in a way that we could never know the Holy Spirit. So why not go to him and see his perspective on the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and from that perspective, we're going to get to know the, know the Holy Spirit in a really deep way. So come back next week. You're, you're going to find some things. When I was going through, that message is actually already done. As I studied out that message, I found some things about, about the Holy Spirit I didn't know. And he's going to do the same for you. And as you get more comfortable with the Holy Spirit, and as you get more comfortable with God, When I get up on a Sunday morning and I say, all right, guys, let's just lift up our voices and worship the Lord, the whole place is going to erupt. It's going to erupt because you're going to have confidence to know that, you know what? It's okay. I know the Holy Spirit. I can speak out my praise and speak out my worship without worrying about the stuff I struggled with during the week. I can trust God and the Holy Spirit that he takes me where I'm at, and I can open up my mouth my wow, that's great. You do the worship, worship in mouth, wow, that'd be great. We should. It's good. Uh, come to church and wow with us. I'm sorry, it's not gonna work. <laughs> you know, but that's <laughs> great. You know, so you you have confidence. It's just like you know what the, the worship leader. Everybody's in the room. Everybody's worshiping the Lord. Dennis is like, you know what, guys? Let's lift our 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 our, uh, our vows to Jesus. Let's just worship the Lord. And the whole place is going to be like worshiping the Lord, and then the power and the presence of God will manifest. I guarantee that if we get the confidence in all three of these services to do that, to praise Him no matter what, to come to church ready and prepared to fellowship with the Holy Spirit together, His presence, His power will manifest. And we'll see him do great things here. And then the great things that happen here are going to start happening out there. Amen? Amen. Amen. I remember when I was working with the youth many years ago, like 50 million years ago. 
and we'd have some teenagers, and we had just got done teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We just got done teaching baptism of the Holy Spirit. A bunch of them got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I, and I remember we would get up, and we'd be like, all right, guys, let's just pray in the Spirit. And all, they just went for it. All of them just went for it. And then God would just start manifesting all over the place things in the room. And I remember, forget this one guy uh, come, came to me because we were in a, a junior high because we couldn't afford a building and so uh, at the time and uh, the youth group and we're in this thing and we had just had a really great worship time. Kids are leading worship and, and um, power of God is manifesting and uh, everybody's praying in the spirit and then this guy comes down from the very back of the bleachers afterwards to talk to me and he said it was his first day and he said he goes um, I was like when everybody was like worshiping like that he goes I just felt something inside me like kind of come up and then I started speaking strange words he goes, what is that? Dude got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He didn't mean me. He didn't need another youth worker. He didn't need another friend. The power of God showed up. The Holy Spirit says, here I am. And he says, come on in. And before you know it, he's praying and speaking in tongues. I mean, that's the perfect will of God. You don't want to depend on me or anybody else for that kind of stuff. You want to just trust the Lord. Because he's bigger, better, and definitely um, you can depend on him. He'll always be there for you. So let's go on an adventurous trip. It's been a while since I've been on a roller coaster, and I went on one of the baby ones yesterday, and it scared the tar out of me. It wasn't even a real roller coaster. You guys know the one at the State Fair, the one that just it doesn't loop. It just goes up and down. It's been a while since I've been on a roller coaster. I thought I was going to die. I was like, yes! On the inside, I'm like, no. You know what I'm saying? God wants to take us on an adventure. I say we go for it. Amen? And I say we go for it. You know, I say we fill up every service here. And, and, and see God do some pretty cool things because he's still into doing miraculous things. What do you got? You guys with me? What do you think? Why don't we do it? Amen? So I got a challenge for you this week. Are you ready? Okay, this is your challenge. I want you, when you're praying and, and spending time with the Holy Spirit, I want you to start talking to him about your day. I get it. He knows about your day. I love to do this, you know, before bed at night. I love to just want to go to sleep. I love to just talk to God about my day. Lord, I woke up a little late this morning, and uh, I got to start getting up earlier, but it was really cool because um, when I got up, you know, um, I had uh, left so a little bit. Actually, I made coffee last night, the night before. So when I got up, I already coffee made, and that was really, really kind of cool. It was really good just to have coffee or whatever, because I usually make it, you know. And, and uh, boy, when I got up, Mocha's right next to me, because uh, our dog Hershey passed away, and you know that. And that's what I'm talking. That's how I'm talking. We're not specific. That's how I'm talking to God. I talk to God like that. It doesn't need to be three or four or five or ten hours. It could be a minute here and a minute there. It could be a half an hour in one spot. Just talk to him about your day. And you know, you're just going to start to sense him. And you're going to feel a little lighter and a little better. So that's your challenge. That's, just, that's an easy one. Last week was a little harder. And if you didn't do last week, you should do it. Copy down those scriptures and get to know the personality of the Holy Spirit. But this week, that's what I want you to do. I want you to take some time and just talk to the Lord about your day. Amen? All right, good. Do we have a thought for the day? Okay.